I'm a national motivational speaker, international. Most folks don't know that I'm also an ordained minister and evangelist. What I've been doing, I've been doing for a long time. I believe that we have some kids that are sitting here right now and some adults that are sitting here right now that what will go on this afternoon can change their lives forever. I know that the issue that this island has is not necessarily a gang drug bully issue, but it's a family issue. I think when we address the adults as well as the kids is that's when we're gonna walk into the supernatural. I don't have no podium, I'm gonna do the best I can, but there was a young brother by the name of Mark, he was 16 years old and he tried to commit suicide. He had taken gasoline, poured it all on himself, and set himself on fire. He had burned off part of his face, his lips, his arms, his whole body was burnt, but he survived. And when they went to Mark, they asked Mark a question, why in the world did you want to kill yourself? And Mark responded the best he could with no lips. Half of his face burnt off, he responded, my mom and dad got a divorce. I guess I never got over it. I believe that we have a generation of kids that have been through so much stuff that most of them have simply not gotten over it. But I want to encourage the young folks that are sitting here right now and the adults as well. I have a rag right here. I'm not even going to play the rag. I'm just going to put the rag right here. When I pull this rag out, most people don't know whether I'm a blood or a crip. I'm a Christian. And I'm proud of the fact that I'm a Christian. I love my mom, I love my dad to this day. Whenever you hear me lecturing, you're gonna hear me lecturing things that are relevant. They might be simple, but yet they're relevant. I think we've got to back up some. We've got to get a revelation of where we come from and ask ourselves a question, why has things gotten so bad? Young people, your future is in who you have chosen to honor. I'm going to say that again. Your future is in who you have chosen to honor. If you succeed, it's because of a person you have chosen to honor. America's young people, and I believe that they've exported demons from hell to this island. We got kids in this island that have been raised in this island that are more American than American kids themselves. They're under a curse. Now watch this here. I tell young people the reason why we've got so many kids that are depressed and suicidal, we've got 125,000 kids that bring their guns to school Monday through Friday, a million teenage girls get pregnant, 33 and a half million kids live away from their biological fathers and on and on and on. Our kids in America are under a curse. I believe the reason why that our kids are under a curse, I want you to get this, and it's so elementary. And some of you adults that are sitting here right now have pushed this curse upon your kids. God says in the Bible, in Ephesians 6, 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It's not a question of whether it's right or not. God says it is right. Verse 2 says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment. Look up here, look up here. Don't let me lose you. I know you say, well, I know all that. Well, you really don't know all that. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Young people, look up here. I'm telling you right now, I can teach you something that will set you free. I can teach you something right now that would take that curse off your life because some of you are running around and you're acting the way that you're acting and you don't even know why you're acting like that. Some of you are depressed and upset and lonely and you just want to leave and have no hope. A lot of it's tied to the fact of a commandment that God says, and it's the first commandment with a promise, honor your mom and dad. I believe the reason why we have some kids that are sitting here right now that are not honoring their mother and father because some of you adults never did it. Now, if you're going to say amen, say amen to that. As long as I'm kicking down and talking about kids, you want to say amen and all of that. But I'm telling you right now, if there was ever a time for adults, 
The problem is kids can't learn what their parents have not been taught. I want to challenge you today as I give my testimony. I want to challenge the young kids that are sitting here right now. You've got to break that generational curse over your life. There's nothing wrong with you loving your mom and dad. There's nothing wrong with you loving your grandparents. There's nothing wrong with you loving your step parent because that's what all some of you sitting here right now, that's all that you got. But it's almost the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The problem, listen to me adults, the problem is that we have a generation of kids that don't love themselves. We've got to teach these kids how to love themselves. And if there was ever a time for us to be serious about it, now hear what I'm saying. I know in a minute we're going to have a concert and thank God for a concert. Thank God for music. But let me tell you something. Unless we change the heart of a kid, unless we change the heart of this island, this island will be lost in a matter of time. If there was ever a time to be serious and some folk be talking about, young man, young man, excuse me, tap him on the shoulder. Some brother tap him on the shoulder. If he's gone home, fine, but he's not going to get up and walk while I'm talking. I'm not going to allow it. I'm not like that. I, I, I'm a hood rat. I come from hell. I didn't come here tonight to try to be cute. I'm not trying to come back to the island. If I do a program, praise God. But if I don't do one, praise God. I'm not looking for no friends. I'm not looking for no connections. I'm not really trying to sell out my table while I'm here tonight. This afternoon, I'm trying to touch the heart of a kid. Every demon in hell ought to be trembling right now because there's some kids that are sitting here. And I told them when I was at the school, I can tell you a secret. I got a secret to tell you tonight. But you know, when I was growing up, I wrote three books. One book is called Prison of the American Dream. I've been burnt, stabbed. I've been shot 13 times. I'm not bragging. I should have died. I should have never made it. I was never disrespected in the street. That's why I don't understand how some people come up in the church from the street and they disrespect the word that comes from the man or the woman of God. That's one thing we've got to teach our kids. We've got to teach our kids a thing called respect. But I love my dad and I love my mom. But I want you to hear what I'm saying. I was never taught. It wasn't no Mitch, it wasn't no Hope Foundation, wasn't no Ross and wasn't nobody else. The only people that raised me was my father who was a killer and the only books that I read were on pimping and selling drugs. I was raised in a home where there were so many kids, we never had enough to eat. We had rats and roaches and we moved every year. I watched my father beat my mama for years and when I got older, all I could, uh, when I was in relationship with women, all I knew was to beat my women like I had been taught. I've been trying to tell adults that the kids are only acting out what they've been taught. That's why we gotta change what they're being taught. We gotta change that old fake stuff. We got to change adults. I said it on TV last night. Some of you parents sitting here right now trying to be the friend of your kid. Your kids don't need no more friends. Your kids need a mama and your kids need a daddy. And they need somebody who will set down rules and parameters. Don't nobody let their kids just run wild. That brother's right. Ought not be no curfew. There was a time I was going up when the lights, when the street lights came on. I better be in the house. I got a beat down then and my daddy wasn't feeling right. He'd beat me in the morning for not being home at time. I watched my father beat my mama. And nights I would lay in the bed as a little bitty kid. And we always had other little bitty kids. And I never forget there were rats who would come into our room. And they would come into the crib of my brother and my sister. And they would bite my brother and sister. And only because I was the oldest son, I had to protect them. And I never forget I'd put a shoe or something by the bed. And when the rats would come into the room, I would throw the shoe or a brick at a rat and run the rat out of the room. But then there were nights I would lay in the bed, just a little bitty kid. And I would watch my dad come in my room, my hero would come in my room and I, I would hear that noise and I would clean the sleep out of my eye and look to the right and there my father was raping my sister. Little bitty kids sometimes don't know what's real and what's not. Then I went on a television talk show and I found out my father raped all four of my sisters. None of my sisters made it. I, I told the kids about my brother when, when, when my daddy raised me to be so violent. Everything around me I attacked. 
On Friday nights, we would fight each other, and sometimes uh, grown men, my father would sick me on grown men, and, and we would take them down, and, and I felt that power. There was something to the power of that, and I couldn't control myself. I was always out of control. Years later, my brother and I got in an argument. I cut off part of his finger, and he scalded me. I went and got a gun and put it in his face and emptied it, and he went to the hospital. He never died, but two years later, he went to jail for murder. I, I told the kids today, that's why I can't play. If, if there ain't but one kid here today, if there's only one young man that I invited from whatever school, if there's only one that hear the word of God and it changes, nobody came from me. Nobody came to rescue me. My son is in jail for murder. My son turned out like I turned out. What goes around comes around. I've been telling these kids that if you don't honor your mama, one day you will be a parent and your kids will not honor you. You say, I'll beat them down. I'll make them. You can't make your kids do nothing. It's what they've been taught. I love my son. I love my kids. And I was raised in a home when they never talked about God. I was raised in a home, there was no value system. And I thought what I was doing every, I thought every man beat down they women. I, I thought every man went out and hustled money. I, I thought every man was out on the streets banging. But I found out later on it wasn't the case. I went to a pool hall one night and I, I'll never forget, I, I, we were in there gambling this in one of my books and, 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 and I win a bunch of money and I, I just spout all this profanity. Profan we have a generation of kids now, part of their language is nothing but profanity. I had some adult woman stand up one day and had the audacity to say to me, well, you know, the cussing is part of our culture. I said, you're a liar, ma'am. Cussing is not a part of our culture. Profanity is a confession of a weak-minded person. I don't care whether you're a kid or an adult. There's some of you adults sitting here right now. You need to grow up and you need to clean your mouth up. How are you going to tell some kids to stop cussing? How are you going to tell some kids to stop doing it if you're doing it? And I'll never forget, I was always so violent, so aggressive. I'm aggressive like that now. God lets some stuff stay. That's why I just don't play no lot. Somebody should have had that little girl sit down. You see what I'm talking about? If you can't control a crowd like this, if you can't control your kids in here, you're not going to be able to control no kids in an island. And it ain't me trying to be rough or tough. There got to be boundaries. Our kids got to have rules. There's got to be rules in the schools. There's got to be rules in the street. And, and, and this man cussed me out and came out the bathroom. And I never forget, I was so angry. I tried to knock him out. But you see, I hit a killer. This man had killed someone two months earlier in Chicago. He was on the run. He knew who I was. I had checked in my piece, and he shot me from the ground with a 380 twice and blew me over a table. He turned on my best friend and shot him twice, and then he shot me another time in my leg, in my leg and, and I'm in a pool of blood, and, and he walks up to me after being shooting me four times. He walks up and takes the gun and puts the gun in my face, and I'm laying there in a pool of blood, and he cocks the gun and fires the gun in my face, and there's no bullets left in the gun. See, I used to walk around thinking I was the man, but I wasn't the man. My grandmama knew the man. I had an old 76 year old Baptist grandmother that prayed for me for 19 years and 6 months she pled the blood of Jesus around me they couldn't kill me because I always had purpose on my life God knew that once I got saved God knew that I would run for the kingdom the rest of my life but I never slowed down I got shot one time and I was at home and I came home and they said we gonna kill you everybody they've always been trying to kill me never had no hope never believed in longevity my gang, and I, I encourage some of you that are sitting here right now because I know I've spoken to some of the brothers and the sisters that are here that belong to the gang. Let me tell you something. I'm not anti-gang. I'm anti-wrong. I'm anti-banging. I'm anti-people holding the black community hostage because won't nobody say nothing. They say, don't snitch. We don't care. If they rape our kids, don't snitch. If we got our elderly folks held up, don't snitch. That's the lie from the pit of hell. No, and when they open up fire, they shot me twice in my arm and I spun around and I got my gun out because I didn't care nothing about dying and I'm firing back and they shoot me point blank with a 38 blow me up against the car and they kept firing those guns they shot me five times and after they shot me five times I broke didn't nobody come to rescue me if there's one thing I can say to the politicians if there's one thing I can say to the leaders that are here right now I am telling you there's a spirit of urgency on this island that if we don't come together like my brother 
brother said, I don't care whether you're a Democrat or Republican, black or white, male or female, it don't make no difference. The commonality, the common ground, if nothing else, it ought to be the kids. Our, our kids got to be more important than the tourists. Our, our kids got to be more important than the money. And if we don't stand up, and, and, and after they had shot me five times, I broke and ran and fell into a gutter and started dying. And I'll never forget, I call out to God. Listen to me, young people, I'm about done. I'm going to tell you a secret. I searched my whole life. See, when I went to the prison the other day, they couldn't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing about banging and slanging. You can't tell me God, I think, allowed me to make big money. I pay cash for a Rolls Royce. I, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you what I was allowed to do. But what goes up got to come back down sooner or later. There's a life expectancy of a thug, and of a dope. There is a life expectancy. And after they shot me all them times, I cried out to God. I said, God, please, I don't want to die. N not in the gutter. I was alone. I didn't care about dying. I didn't want to die in the gutter. And they take me to the hospital. All three bullets went through my arm. 238 slugs went in my chest. They never come out. They couldn't find them. Years later, they found 238 slugs in front of my heart. They found a bullet in my spine. I've got a bullet in my spine with that much calcium around it. There's no way in the world logistically should I even be walking, let alone anything else. And over the years, God has sustained my body. He sustained my life. And the only reason why I didn't die is because I had purpose and I had destiny. And you that are sitting here right now, there's purpose and destiny on your life. But Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan wants to destroy your family. He wants to take your body and do whatever he can with it. And I spent all those years searching. Then one day I'm on my way to kill a man. And some women started praying for me. I'll never forget it. That's why I'm telling you. That's why when I walked out, I don't care. I don't care about what you think, about your articulation of my message. I don't care about no taping. I don't care about no TV. What I care about, I respect all of that, but what I care about, I'm not going to let the devil keep some adult that's sitting here right now from responding to my secret. I'm not going to let some, some kids sitting here right now, and I, and I meant to say it when I first started, you need to turn them stupid cell phones off. You need to turn anybody got a cell phone on now any adult that got a cell phone on now you ought to be obedient you ought to be obedient right now ain't nothing more important that's what's going on right now your texting your calling all of that you ought to take 20 minutes out and say you talk about I want to help save the kids turn your stupid phone off for a minute and let God move and I don't care if you get mad or not who you're calling some of y'all ain't even got no minutes on your phone Some of y'all got phones, just light up. You can't call nobody. You can't get no text. You just sitting there trying to look important. <laughs> Shut them phones off. How many kids we got sitting here right now? Very quickly, I'm going to close. How many kids we got sitting here right now and or adults not married? How many of y'all are still virgins? Throw your hands up and scream. All the virgins. That's what I'm talking about. Be proud of the fact that you're a virgin. Don't be nobody's hoe, whether you're male or female. I designed this t-shirt. I'm a virgin and proud of it. Who wants a t-shirt? I got something else. Here's a t-shirt. Say, pull them up. We passed a law in Atlanta, Georgia. We don't want to see your dirty drawers no more. And to the brothers at SAG, wash them up, then pull them up. The back says, pants up, see the mind, not the behind. Come on, say amen. Who want a free shirt? Who want a free shirt? He had his hand up. I got to close. <laughs> I got to close. Now watch. Some adult is sitting there right now. You mad because I said turn your phone off. You mad. Some adult sitting here right now. I'm telling you mad. You angry. 
and you got kids out of control. Now you want to bring them to a program. You want to bring them to a church when you don't understand that strong churches don't build strong families. Strong families build strong churches. And I take issue, and I love all my brothers and the speakers, but Hillary Clinton lied. It don't take no village to raise no kid. That's not biblical. The Bible says train up your rug rat yourself. The Bible says train, come on. The Bible says train up your kids. I'm not turning my kid over to no community. That might work in Africa. But my next door neighbor buy me a child molester. Don't touch my kid. Don't touch my kid. And so I'm on my way to kill a man. Now let me close. Let me close. He's going to play something. Let me close before I get too excited and start battling with some of you adults. I'm going to tell you a secret. I thought when I had kilos of cocaine, I used to have pictures of my face all in it. Stacks and stacks of money. I, I, would, I would take that Rolls Royce and drive and, and man, it would look like Cheech and Chong. We, we'd be getting so high. And, and, and it's almost like God just said, okay, get that out your system. Because we got work to do. We got work to do. And so I'm on my way to kill this man. Watch this here. We're going to play something very quick. Watch this here. Listen to me. Because some Christians are praying. See, see, today really ain't just for today. Today is for next week. I, I prophesy with that red and blue rag. Very few men, very few speakers can bring out a rag. And normally I wipe my head with the red part and the bloods will flash their blood sign. And then I'd show the blue and the crypts would flag their crypt sign and they would try to figure out what's up. Listen to me. I'm on my way to kill a man now. You got to read my book. I'm on my way to kill a man and some women up north started praying for this gorilla, this maniac. And something came to me a word and said, you know what, enough is enough. You shot enough people, you sold enough dope. You spent a lifetime out there in the street and you still not happy. And when they started praying, something came to me and I just started reading this Bible that someone had given me. And then I ran across a scripture that says, ye shall know the truth. Listen to me, people. Everybody talks about the truth, but I read it and said, you know the truth, and the truth has set you free. And I said, my God, all these years, it was right in front of me. All these years, you know we have a generation of kids in America that don't know nothing about God. Now watch this here. I didn't kill the man. They started praying, and one day, I got down on my knees. I read the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if Joseph Jennings, therefore, if Joseph Jennings, therefore, anybody that accept God becomes brand new. I, I said, that's got to be me because my body is racked with pain. My mind is messed up. My son's in jail for murder. Another son went to jail. My best friend is doing 160 years in prison. My other best friend got shot in the face three times and I look around me and see all this death and destruction and somehow I made it through to tell a secret. And here's the secret. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no one gets to the Father except through the Son. A lot of people talk about God, but there's only one way to. I don't care about what you think. I'm telling you about what God says ain't but one way to me. And I want to clarify that that's the secret that you can get to God. Yesterday when I spoke in the prison, I was amazed at all these inmates. When the Spirit of God fell, they responded because they know they can't do it on their own. I'm going to ask you in a moment. Every young person and every adult sitting here right now, the most important decision you could ever make in your life is not what color your rag is. It's not your job, G.D. Burton said, 100 years, now that ain't gonna matter. The amount of money you had in the bank, the kind of car you drove, the house you lived in, but you were important in the life of a kid. That's what it's about. But Jesus said, now you keep them kids from coming to me. That's why you're going to start seeing soldiers that stand up. They don't care about what nobody thinks. It's about nothing more than rescuing kids. 
But he said, there's only one way to me, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And some folk will say, well, I'm baptized. I didn't ask you, were you baptized? Some kids will say, I go to church. I'm not asking you if you go to church. You can go to church and be baptized. Your daddy can be a preacher, and you can die and go to hell without knowing the secret. Ain't but one way. Ain't but one way. We bind that confusion. Ain't but one way. God is God. And I want to challenge you right now. The secret is, I got saved. People look at me even on the television program and I jump to churches and the church want to jump up and say, don't be talking about no church. I'm part of this church. And the church is part of the problem. Because the church would step out and put in some work like the dope man and a gang man and everybody else putting in work. The church don't want to put in no work. But if you're here right now, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. One little girl. It was so amazing. Yesterday on TV, I could hardly physically, I was freezing and I was shivering. My heart was almost about to explode. I, I believe for a brief moment, man, it was almost as though God just put all that pain, all the pain of all the kids on my shoulders. And I, I could barely contain myself until I got back to the hotel. I, I really couldn't shake it. But it reminded me of this girl. And I'll end with this right here. Her name is Mimi. I went to California and someone called me and said, we want you to speak in all the schools in Oakland except one school. And I'll never forget telling that man, let, let me come and speak in that school first. He said, they'll never listen. And I was absolutely amazed that when I went into the school and I start talking about mom and daddy, when I start talking about kids being abandoned, I started seeing pockets of kids cry. See, when we say honor mom and dad, I told the kids, what if mama died tomorrow? What if your dad died tomorrow? Where, wherever you be, you almost take them for granted. You have no concept of reality. And they started crying. I seen a woman walk through the back door. She was Caucasian with long hair. And finally, she made her way to me. And she stood for 45 minutes and waited while these kids just cried. And I'll never forget this woman said, And this woman said, I want you to come Sunday and meet my adopted family. And first I said no, but then I said yes. And that Sunday she picked me up and jumped out of her car. And she said, I can help you get in every school in California. She was rich. She gave me a hug. A lot of times I go to churches, I don't get no hug until they find out who I am. I got ready to get in this woman's car and I'll never forget it. I opened the door. And when I opened the door, this little black girl was in the front seat. And I shut the door and got in the back. Because if you're around me for any length of time, you're going to find out I'm not important at all. I just speak to kids. I got in the back seat of the car and we started to drive from Oakland to San Francisco and I touched the back of this girl's seat and when Mimi turned around, it was like somebody took a vacuum hose in my mouth and sucked all the life out of me. I couldn't breathe. It looked like she was dead. We finally got to this woman's so-called church and little Mimi got out and ran inside. I, I, I want to tell you today, it changed my life. We're on the street corner now, and this Caucasian lady is telling me about her adopted daughter that's black. She said, Joseph, three months ago, Mimi, four years old, three 16-year-old boys raped her. They took turns raping this four-year-old girl. And they not only raped this four-year-old girl, they gave her a venereal disease, and they destroyed her life, and I cried. I've never cried from being shot. I never cried from being beat down. But that day in California, it touched my life so hard. I just wept and I'm saying, God, why? Why, why do you show me? Why do you show me like kids in the last couple of days that are, are, are just almost just destroyed? And, and God said, little Mimi's going to represent all the kids you ever speak to. Because most of the kids you speak to are going to be dead on the inside. And I just cried. Mimi represents the kid, but get the kicker. She got raped outside of her real mother's apartment. And her real mother was inside the apartment on the couch drunk. And she heard her daughter screaming and she couldn't move. The Lord says the little girl represents the kid, but the mama represents the church. Because while the kids are being raped, because while the kids are being devastated, the church, and look at, I told you I'm a Christian. 
But if anybody got the power to make a change, it ought to be a believer. The church ought to be making a difference. They ought, they ought to, the government ought to call the church and say, we got a problem on the island. 